Hey guys, what's up? Ochev here, another top five video for you guys over on Dugout Creative. I have one that's really fun today. Top five best baseball personalities, best baseball personalities, wackiest baseball personalities, most interesting personality, whatever you guys want to call it. Top five baseball personalities by whatever metric, you know, is included in this video. There's a lot of different ways that you can measure personality, but I think in this video, you guys will understand why I chose what I chose. Let us get right into number five. Number five, Al Hrabowski, AKA the Mad Hungarian. Now, Al Hrabowski, I hope I'm saying your name right. I looked it up. I think I am. Was known as the Mad Hungarian for his pre pitch antics, his overall intimidating nature, his fearlessness on the mound as you see the psychopath charging. Ooh, with the duck move. Damn, he was ready to fight. He was known for just his antics. Look, the umpire fired the ball back. All types are angry, and he just. He's like, oh, look at him, look at him, look at him, look at him. <laughs> Unfazed, and then hit him with it. Hit him with it, man. Roll it back. This dude is a lunatic. I love it. He admitted later in his career that these tactics he had, going crazy behind the mound, slapping his glove together, screaming, shouting, whatever he was doing, going nuts, was an intimidation tactic he used to get himself confident and to scare other hitters. I love it. I am absolutely here for it. Number four, Mark Fidrich, a.k.a the bird now mark fidrich was a phenom in his rookie season he was just an insane rookie on the mound with a 19 and 9 record overall 2-3-4 era for the detroit tigers but what was he known for for being a personality big and lanky he talked to the ball he had a crazy delivery he'd manicured the mound perfectly to his liking before he'd go out there and pitch he, look he's just going crazy out there he's jumping i don't know what he's doing i, I, I don't know how that's not, he might be balking left and right he captivated the fans People loved watching this guy pitch. Uh, unfortunately, he had arm problems and injuries that ended his career prematurely. And his rookie season was his only year where he really popped off. But nonetheless, man, baseball was a better sport and is a better sport. We're having Mark Fidrich in the sport, even just for one year alone. Uh, the footage from this crazy game against the New York Yankees was just, it was electric. To the point where he ended the complete game with a win. The fans did not move from their seat until he came back out. He shook the security guard's hands. He gave a big, big, you know, curtain call. And the ovation he received from the fans was insane. I love this guy. I think this goofiness and this just showsmanship is what the baseball sport right now needs. Big time. On to number three, Turk Wendell. Now, Turk Wendell was a pitcher who was known for doing things like this. Hopping over the line before he went out there to pitch. Kind of like meditating, talking to himself before the inning started. And then he'd point to center field and... Like, to his center field, he did it every time. He would point to him, kind of like him a little bit of a wave. Uh, he had four licorice before each inning. Yes, that's four licorice he would shove deep into his mouth. Not tobacco, not gum, none of that. Licorice. He would brush his teeth in between innings. He had a shark teeth, an animal bones necklace. This guy was out of his mind. I love it. He is the... Look at, look at this dude shoving licorice deep in there. I think it's black licorice, too. This guy's a menace. He had all the fans just... I guess kind of laughing, but laughing with him. Just like, let's go to the park today. Let's see if Turk can pitch. Let's watch him pitch. Let's enjoy the antics and the show, essentially. Let's go there for the show. This guy was the epitome of theatrics. Rube Waddell. Now, Rube Waddell was a pitcher from the early 20th century. A dominant pitcher at that. Somebody who was known for being really, really good at what he does, but also being absolutely insane. He would do interesting things he would chase fire trucks during the games he would leave the stadium and chase them down the street he was often said to be distracted by shiny objects that fans would bring to games and he would wrestle alligators in the offseason i'm not kidding this man was nuts he was so out of it that he also forgot how many times he was married he was frequently married and divorced he was on record as being an alcoholic but he also was a humanitarian he helped out a lot of uh, areas with hunting when there was you know, when they needed hunters to get rid of animals. He helped out his hometown in Kentucky multiple times during floods. And unfortunately, he caught pneumonia after a flood, after one of the first floods he was helping with. And then, you know, his health never really got better. He was known for being an Iron Man. And then that pneumonia got him. It was early in the 20th century. I remember early 1900s. They didn't really have great medicine. So he got pneumonia, never really recovered. And then actually helped out again when there was a second flood a few years later. Caught pneumonia again, and unfortunately, it made it even worse to the point where he was placed basically in hospice care until he passed away at the young age of 37. 37 was not young, young back in the day, but it's still too young, especially for a character such as this. 
I wish we had highlights of this man. He seemed like an absolute character. Okay, on to number one, Manny Ramirez. Now, Manny Ramirez might not be the most illustrious personality on this list in terms of things that he did when, and when playing and went off the field, but Manny was able to do all these crazy things that he did, aka running up the wall, high-fiving a fan, uh, essentially becoming one of the first people to nonchalantly pimp home runs all the time, known for his left field antics and not, you know, not really playing the position well and also not really caring. He was a showman, but the reason why he's number one on my list is because he did all these insane things, was really one of the first people to, to bring swag and, and that relaxed nature into the sport, that overly baggy uniform, all that stuff, and also be a top offensive player of his decade. Manny Ramirez, in my opinion, is a Hall of Famer. He's one of the best hitters with some of the best seasons we've ever seen. As you can see, there was that play where, for some reason, he decided to cut off Johnny Damon's relay. I know Damon had a weak arm, but that ball would have been cut off regardless. To me, it's hilarious what Manny did in his career, but it's also number one on this list because he did it while being such a force at the plate. Now, I know what you guys might be saying. There's a guy on this list who wrestled alligators and, f and chased fire trucks on this list. How is he not number one? Well... Not a lot of footage, man, and it's a lot of hearsay, a lot of stories that were passed down. But mostly it's because, to me, Manny was one of those players who was so good at what he did that it didn't matter what he did on the field in terms of bonehead mistakes or, or you know, if he was lollygagging because everyone would be like, ah, it's Manny. Because you know he's going to go in the bottom half of that inning and hit a big three-run homer or something like that. So that's why I got a number one. But it doesn't have to be your number one. I want to hear your guys' thoughts on this. I want to hear what you guys have. I want to just know what you think about this series as a whole. I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. I'm out. Peace.